going to the bar, yep, partying. Three years later, after that date, I lost everything I owned. Yeah. How? Yeah. I got uh, mixed up on drugs. I lost everything I owned. I was in jail. Where did this idea, the plant guy, where did it come from? Hey guys, I'm here at the plant guy in Fort Lauderdale, hanging out with Matthew Lang, my superhero, a guy that I look up to. You've accomplished so much, man. Oh, thanks, man. So as you'll see behind us, you'll see some pretty amazing things. You've got, what would you call these flowers? Not fake flowers. What's the artificial flowers? And you've got some amazing characters and animals behind us. And we are here. I want to interview you and talk to you about your business. Because a lot of people coming up and watching me and on my YouTube channel, they are like, oh, it must be nice. This guy just, somebody just handed this business to him. It was a family business. It was super easy for him. Woe is me. I have this idea, but I'll never be able to do it. So I want to I want to ask you, where did it all start for you? Where where was, where did this idea, the plant guy, where did it come from? Yeah, so um, I guess it's going to take it back about 12 years. Perfect. Yeah, 12 years ago, um, I actually started my first plant store, and it was just because it's a passion of mine. I thought, you know, it was after the economy went south 2008. Oh, yeah. My brother had 370 employees. And, and it uh, went south. You know, we were doing all the high rises around here. Your brother, from what I remember, was an electrician. Yep. You had 380 employees. Yep. You guys were cranking, obviously, through that yep. up upswing. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, everything fell apart. Fell apart. Yep. So that was 2008, 2009. And um, yeah, he went down to 25 employees. And it was, it was crazy. And you, know? you were one of those employees? I was one of them, yep. What were you doing for him at the time? Um, just as an assistant, you know? So I basically, you know, we had a helicopter, a plane, like we would go, you know, I would get them all set up and drop paychecks off all to the high rises, you know, every Friday. Cause we had like six high rises we were doing, but yeah, it was crazy. Was your family in ele electrical business? Yeah. My dad has the 273rd license in the state of Florida. The 273rd yeah. license in the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. So your dad was like one of the people that helped build the infrastructure here in Florida. 100%. Did you work with your dad when you were growing up doing electrical work? Uh, I, I, I didn't really know, but I just, it's, you know, it's within me to be, I, I'm kind of an engineer, I guess you could say, in my brain. I wasn't, I didn't go to school for it, but it, it's in our family, you know? Okay, so you got, you, you're your brother's assistant, 380 mm. employees, yep. 2008 comes around. Yep. You lose basically everything. Basically. Helicopter's gone. Helicopter. Plane's 2009, gone. Plane's gone. Yeah. Employees all get let go. Yeah. All yep. the buildings that you are working on, like the electrical work, all that kind of stuff. What happened to those projects? So all those projects, so that they start getting funded, right? And so the uh, bank, the, ba the bank, basically the funding, funding just them. stops. Right. The, no one was buying them, so they, you know, they were selling them as pre before it was being built. They were selling them off, but then and that just stopped. Now were not, you a single dude at the time? Uh, I had a partner at that time. Okay. And you, where were you living? So I was living in Fort Lauderdale. Okay, right down the road. Yeah. You were yeah. born and raised right here born in Fort Lauderdale. Born and raised here, yep. It's a pretty special place. Yeah, my grandfather milked cows in Boca Raton, where uh, the mall is right now. Milked cows in yes. Boca Raton? Yeah, or, uh, uh, 1947. How times have changed. Right. So. Total Florida native. Did plants, this kind of design stuff, was it always in your mind that you wanted to do something like this? Or was there a spark? There was an idea that popped up that no, you just I, had to do? Yeah, as a young kid, I always went into the Sherwood Forest in Coral Springs. So I would go out and pull trees out of the ground. My mom thought I was weird. I would replant them. I, would, I was always out doing something like that. You know, but time goes by, and now all of a sudden you're 35, 39, and you're like, oh, wait, that's kind of cool. How can I make money at doing that? You know, it's I, kind of I unfortunate to that it took that much time to yeah. figure that out, though. Yeah, right. Well, because nobody's talk, having these conversations. This right. is why I look at your story and I'm like, who else has done anything like you? Right. Like even the even the animals and the way you guys are doing what you're doing. Is there anybody on the planet doing what you're doing? There, there are other people that do some similar to this. Yeah. But we're taking it to the next level. You know so what I mean? you, but this was an idea that you had. So listen, in 2000 and, uh, 2009, there wasn't like plant stores or it wasn't like the end thing to have plants right you know what i mean so um but that's when i i hit me i'm gonna i'm gonna open my own plant store yeah damn okay so the mindset that you were in at the time did you have a ton of cash i had no cash i had nothing you had yeah. no cash but you're like i'm gonna start a plant store yeah and so and i'll do really quick <laughs> yeah i took the plants that i had and it's I, always the crazy guys that yeah. are like let me start something with no money yeah 
so the story real quick on that part was um, I, my brother lost everything. So I said, you know what, I'm going to look to my partner. Let's open a plant store. And, he, you know, so he was like, well, how are we going to do that? I saw this space for $500 a month. And I, it was a little at the end unit, and uh, we rented it. I like a commercial space? Commercial space. It was like a plaza, shopping plaza. It was Okay, awful. like a strip mall. Yeah, it was terrible. Just though. like a shitty little strip shitty mall? Shitty little Oakland Park, yeah. And you're, like, excited about this $500 so excited. a month? excited, yep. And so I filled it with plants of mine. And I got a banner made, yeah, and then, and then that's how it started. You had a banner made that you made yourself or you hired somebody? No, I, I, I actually had it printed, so I think I paid $69 or $79. Then I got some PVC piping and I made this frame and then I did rope to hold it up, you know, like through the eyelets. And so I created my sign, yeah. So you rented this space, you filled it up with plants. Where did the plants come from? Um, the were you making them? Were you pulling them some out? Some of the plants were coming out of the ground, some were coming into the flea market, some were, you know, everywhere. But most of them were mine that I had, you know. So as you and your partner, yeah, you had a banner. Yeah. Did you start selling stuff right away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slowly, very slowly. And it was yeah. all from traffic, just from the strip mall. Right. And so I did everything I could do to get people to see it. Right. So I put like yellow and green flags on the roof. I put a little, you know, stand outside, plants here, and I did it that way. And how'd that go? It went okay. You were paying bills. No, barely making it. How were you? How were you survive? How were you paying your bills then? Uh, I was just barely making it, and then um, I realized when a client came in and said, "Hey, would you come to my house?" And I was like, "What?" She's like, "Would you come to my house and, and sell me some plants?" And I was like, "You want me to?" Come? I was like, "Okay," and so I went there, and I brought in a little two carbon copy uh, piece of paper. You know the carbon copy? Oh yeah. Prints on the other side. Old school, baby. So I brought that, and I brought my magazines, and she said, I want you to look around the house and tell me what I need. And I'm like, okay. And so I did that. And I started writing it up, and she said, okay, how much is it? And, I, and it was like, I don't know, I can't remember now, but it was like $3,900. She said, okay, great, and she wrote a check. She didn't even fight on the price. Didn't fight on the price, and I, I, I lost all feeling in my feet. So I, I get the check, <laughs> yeah. What was, what was going through your mind? Were you thinking like, holy shit, first off, I should have charged more. I, I was so She nervous. didn't even fight you on 3,900 bucks. Didn't fight me, yeah. And you know, that was 12 years ago. I mean, $3,900 12 years ago is like $7,000 probably today. Right, that's a lot for me, yeah. But $3,900, do you remember your markup on that? Do you remember how much you actually took home out of that 3,900 bucks? Um, probably, I, was, I didn't have a good markup, so probably more than half of it, but not. Not, not like, what it should have like been. now, yeah. You go to this lady's house, you help her, you walk through, you, you have an eye for this stuff, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you. It was easy. Now in your business, how much of your business today is around going to people's homes and helping them design things that they just can't see? About eighty percent. No shit. Yeah. Yeah, eighty percent. Isn't that interesting that you started thinking oh, people are just going to come buy plants from me? Right. I, I they know what they want. <clears throat> right. And it's actually the polar opposite. Correct. I started that way with a price tag on a plant, right? But then I kept making changes to the idea of how it was going to happen. You know. Based on what your customers wanted. Correct. So feel, I, yeah, feeling goes out of your feet. Yeah. She writes you a check for 3900 yep. bucks. Yeah. You then also go f procure them. You go get them. Yeah. You design them and then you place them in the home. Correct. All for $3,900. Yeah. What would you have charged in today's money for that same thing? Oh my gosh. 15 grand probably? Yeah, I don't think a minimum uh, we, yeah. It's 20 grand for me to come to your house, like for that. I imagine you've got clients, cause I'm a client, I'm a client, I'm like your clientele. Right. I'm somebody that, values this tremendously right it's all about that how you f see it fits for you because like some guys that have a lamborghini they're not going to buy this plant it's crazy yeah it is crazy i yeah. i actually the thing that i see a value in this yeah. product is you know we'll put some b-roll into the shot and we'll, we'll give people an understanding of what the plant guy actually does but you guys are a full bespoke plant designer right and installer yeah and the value for me is if I buy something for one of my friends, like I bought, what did I buy here today? Um, I didn't buy anything that we can see, but I bought 
A turtle, uh, like alligator. Turtle, but... alligator, bunnies, rhino. Rhino head. Um, plants for my wife, plants for my office. Yeah, we're going to do some. We're yeah. going to do the sub two logo. And we're going to do some artificial trees inside, custom. Right. From real tree trunks. I can tell you whatever the cost is for the rhino head. Yeah. It's going to, it's going to Jamil Dan, or I'm sorry, Brent Daniels' office. Right. What will, how, how will I make money from that? Do you have any idea? How you'll make money from yeah. that? Yeah. I will make more money on the rhino head than you will. Right. Do you have any idea how that would work? Just from um, him knowing that it was you, you know? It, every day. Yeah, every day. And, you know, even if a conversation comes up, it's like instantly paste more bait. You Think know? about everybody that, like, we've got, just so you guys have an understanding, we'll maybe get some B-roll of this. We've got probably 60, 70 people in the plant guy showroom plus some people outside. Right. Brent Daniels, every Monday, has 80 to 90 people show up to a live podcast. Right. If I buy that rhino right. and I put it up in his office, right. everybody's going to say, where did you get that? 100%. What will Brent Daniels' answer be? Pace Morby. Pace Morby got it guy. from me. He got it from the, the plant, plant guy. guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So every time somebody's asking, Brent is saying my name. Right. I already do business with Brent. Right. I've, I probably buy three or four houses a year from his team right. that goes out, finds deals. So if I remind his team of me every, every day, day, right, it will double how many deals I oh do with him. Oh, my God. 100%. Because he has other clients. 100%. So he goes out and finds a house. And if it fits my criteria, they'll send it to me. But sometimes they have clients that are maybe the, maybe they're the squeaky wheel that are like, hey, yeah. give me the houses. That even pay. I'll pay more money than Pace will pay. Right. And so they'll go sell those deals to them, but that rhino head correct, will make me so much money. It's why I'm here with you today. Why? Well, that's how I met Tarzan, Michael. There you go. And he wanted, you know, something, and I gave a really good discount. I hand brought it to him. And in it was, California? No, he was here in Miami. Oh, he used to live in Miami. Right. And uh, the kangaroo. I met his kangaroo. We the kangaroo met my kangaroo, a real one and an artificial one, and that led to Dan Flashman. Yep, which led to Pace. It's Mormon. amazing what but it's this a connection. What this product can do for somebody like me. Yeah. Right. You in the influence world, not even the influence world. All these business owners, what they're doing is they're taking people out to dinner. Right. They're doing all these things for each other that are fleeting moments. Right. Hey, let me send you tickets to this. Let me take you to Nobu that's $3,000 for Correct. dinner. And it goes away. Goes away. You eat it and it's gone. It's gone. Yeah. Everything that I bought from you today right. will have 20-year lasting effects. It will compound so many times. I will make, from my purchase today, I will make millions of dollars. Right. Right. Your product is so freaking cool. Right. And that's, and that's with all the product. I mean, you know, I always tell, just like this ceiling right here, and I, you're opening a restaurant, it's like, are you hearing? Like, it's so important to get this ceiling done right. Yeah. Because everyone talks about, you know, something that's, yeah. And to think that this started in a strip mall. Strip mall. That you thought, I'm going to put a tag on it, and I'm going to sell these things one a by one. handwritten tag. Handwritten tag all by yourself. Ten bucks. And I don't sell anything for ten bucks now. You don't. No. <laughs> what do you think is the lowest price? I don't know. Oh, um, maybe fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred bucks. Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred bucks. Okay, cool. So you're in the strip mall. Yeah, in the strip mall. This starts going well. It's going well. Do you start realizing I should be asking my clients? Like they, a client comes in. Yeah. And you go, hey, I, I'll come to your house. Yeah. Because you just realized this lady asked you to. It go was to the house. an aha moment. It was an aha moment like that. What changed? When I realized that I was good enough, she told me I was good enough. Wow. Yeah. What did you start doing differently in your business from that moment forward? Believing in myself and then just realizing I am good enough. Now, mind you, it didn't come right away. Like, yeah, she did that, but I needed more of those, right? But at least she started. Right. You know? And so... Do you remember uh, the next person after her? I don't. I just remember me getting excited and you were like thirty nine hundred dollars. I got the bug. Yeah. And I imagine she was ecstatic. Right. Ecstatic. And so and I want to take you through those first two years. Please tell really me. quick. So I got excited, started doing really well. And it got to me. Yeah. And so I started going out, getting excited. You got money coming through the bank got account. Money coming through the bank account. And I started rewarding myself. Oh, I'm going to go out Friday night and have a good time. Yeah.
going to the bar, yep. partying. Three years later, after that date, I lost everything I owned. Yeah. How? Yeah. I got uh, mixed up on drugs. Yeah. Caught me really uh, off guard. Yep. I lost everything I owned. I was in jail. You were May in jail. May 1st, 2012. May 1st, 2012. You were in jail for possession? Yep. And what did that look like? Uh, it was the day that I got arrested and I was, um, I was pulled out of the, pulled out onto the, someone's yard as a matter of fact, and the name of my business at the time was called Green Thumb Pottery and I had that shirt on. And uh, the police officer looked down at me and he looked at the owner of the house's yard that I was sitting on, hey, wouldn't you like Green Thumb Pottery to cut your grass? And it was a moment for me that I would never forget. And I, and, and I look, and, you know, the, I'm laying on the, I'm sitting on the grass and they're looking down on me. It was a beautiful sunny day. I had been up for a couple days and it hit me. And when I got in the police car, I started laughing and crying and saying, thank you so much. From that day, I changed my life. That day. Mm -hmm. Were you partying all night? You wake up in the morning on the lawn or did you get arrested somewhere I got else? arrested in a car and then I, got pulled out and then I was there, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Did you That's, end up having to go to prison? I went, no, just four days in jail. It was great. Four days in jail. I needed it. Yep. And then you, de that's when you detoxed? Yep. And you, you, have, you didn't have another problem ever since? Nope. I went to, but I had to go to drug court. I had to do all that stuff. So I, I get out, right, four days out, and I'm gonna start my business again. Because I remember it was amazing, but I'm gonna get sober. But I got help with that because I got in, you know, I got in trouble obviously, and so I had to go to drug court and I had to pee in a cup every day for, for how long? A long time, year and a half. Yep. Every day or once a week? It, it ended up being like three times a week, towards the you know that whole year. Thank goodness for I had the no car system. I had, I had no home, and so I slept on someone's sofa. And, um, and in a month, I was like, I'm gonna start my own business again, right? So I started looking at properties for lease. So you lost everything. Everything. Like, you lost your lease. Everything. Were you just wrapped up in the whole <clears throat> entire scene of yep. drugs so much that you lost your, you yeah, sold your car quick. or what? No, no, I lost the car. Cause you had it on a lease. Yeah, I lost everything. You, couldn't, went you terrible. couldn't make your payments, no. you couldn't do anything. Mm -mm. Yeah. So you had a friend, shout out to this friend, whoever this friend is, but you had somebody that let you stay on their couch? Yeah. 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 So what was the next step? Uh, the next step was, I, well, I, I got excited for some reason. You know, I'm like, oh my God, I, I know that that was my problem. I'm gonna fix that. And now I wanna get sober and I wanna find a space to lease. So I started looking. I would drive around looking for something uh, I had a friend at the time that helped me, and so I found a space that said for rent. I called him up, and it was on the water, and I wanted to do a plant store on the water. So cool, right? And uh, this guy says, hey, mate. And I'm like, uh, he, he had this Australian guy? Yeah, he had this accent. And so I'm like, hey, <laughs> uh, my name is Matthew, and I used to own a, uh, you know, a plant store on Oakland Park. Oh, I know that store. And I didn't tell him you know, what had happened. I said, but I really want to open something over here. And he goes, great. He goes, I'll meet you there. And so I looked at this space on the water. It was awesome. And I didn't have the money for it. You know, it, He wanted like, I don't know, 2,800 a month or something crazy. Damn. I, first, last year, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't that, have What anything. is that? That's like 7,500 bucks. Yeah, I didn't have that. So I walk in and I got him excited, which got me excited. And we walk through the space, it needed a little work, and then I walk out back, and there's a dock, because it's on the water. It's a strip mall on the water, and there's a, a water taxi back there. And I look at it, and I go, oh man, that's so cool. I'd make that my nursery. And right then, I decided I'd call it the plant boat. And he loved the idea. And so he leased me the store, and I said, listen, I don't have anything but I can fill this up with plants in no time and I could start making some money. And he said, let's do it. And so he allowed me to pay him once I started making some money. Wow. That was a story. What's that guy's name? Uh, John. Shout out to that guy. Yeah. 
Where is he now? He still lives in, in that area, yeah. How long were you guys in that space? Uh, I was in that for, uh, for a year and a half, two years. And then it just started, you know, I started going. Taking off. Yeah. So it was called the plant boat. Yeah. I love that. This, this is so great. You, you tell, you're honest with them. You go, I have nothing. So honest, yeah, nothing. You get him excited. He had to get excited, And yeah. as you're giving him the vision, yep. you're getting excited. Totally. Which then gets these creative juices going. You see the boat, and you're like, yo, yeah. this could be my nursery. And then he loved that. He sees the whole vision. He saw it because he could feel it. Wow. Did you start hiring employees for the shop? No. It everything was, is by yourself. No, yeah. Everything was me for like a year and a half. All by yourself? Oh, yeah. You opened the shop. You visited the client's houses. Everything. You ordered the I plants. You the did... sign around. I'll be right back. No shit. Yeah. I got $500 um, from a friend, and I, I got uh, $500 in orchids. He gave me the stainless steel table. I put it in the shop. My brother had helped me put lights in because they're electricians, and uh, I put the orchids on a table, and I tagged them. And that's how I started. And no then I start, yeah. shit. Yeah. You went back out and got another sign, another banner with yep. some more Same PVC? Same way, I knew how to do it. Yeah, PVC, the plant boat. And then it gets even funnier because it's six months later, right? I wanted to do the boat. Well, that taxi wasn't available. So I went on Craigslist and I found this vessel, right? And it was from uh, Walt Disney World. This guy had bought it and he was trying to get rid of it. And I didn't have money for it. It was like $35,000. And so I said, hey, would you like um, finance that to me? And he's like, well, what do you want to do with this old boat from Walt Disney World, all steel? I said, I want to make it the plant boat. And he said, that's a great idea. He said, okay. He said, pay me a thousand a month and I'll write you over the title to it. And you have to pay me owner financing. And Bro, so I did that. Bro, look at you, seller finance. This right. is all I teach. <laughs> that's what I did. You built your entire business on creative finance, dude. Right. So even even getting into your space, your lease with this guy, yeah. the Australian guy, John, you said, yeah, right? Yeah, John. That, what you did is called arbitrage. Okay. So you get into a space, you don't pay any money until you start bringing money in. Right. Creative finance. Okay. You then go, all right, I see a boat. Yeah. I can't pay you right now. Can I pay you yeah. monthly? He, he goes, like, yeah, a thousand bucks a month. Because it's sitting there. He's not doing anything with it. He can't even sell it, right? It's actually, come to find out, it was actually sinking because it was all steel construction. So it was, it was rotting out, feet. yeah. It held like 200 people. And it was just this, but I could see what I thought it could be, and, you know. So the story goes on and then, it, you know, I, I get the boat, I bring it back. How did you get the boat here? Did you guys put on a big flatbed? John, because my friend John, because he owned that shopping plaza, he's a boat guy. So we drove it up the Miami Harbor. Oh my gosh, this it up is here. still you by yourself. Still me, yeah. You just run around hustling. Hustling. What years were this? Uh, this was um, 2012 and 13. And then, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. How resourceful is that? Yeah. You got a $500 loan basically to do the orchids. Yep. You start selling orchids. Was that like the number one hit for a long time? It, no, no, just, just, for the, just, just for the minute. I mean, it was a pretty good, you know, but it wasn't enough. And then I would bring bigger plants in, and then when those sold, I saw the return was bigger. I was like, oh wait, I, I, it takes more of those and less of that. Okay, I need to do bigger. Would people buy things basically just because they were in your shop? Yes. And it Like was, whatever's in the shop, they're like, I love that, I want to right. take that home. Yeah, it was like a, there was a restaurant next door, right, on the water, obviously. And so I always made sure I was open when they were open at night, right? So I had, I had this really cool music on. It was kind of like this jazz, earthy, Eartha Kitt. I don't know if you know who that is. But no. So like this cool old jazz, like it was from like an old record where you could hear it. And the, the door was open and I had the fans turning, oscillating fans, antique fans. And you would see the plants moving and people would just curiosity drinking their wine would come in. But I, I started at that time pricing things kind of, you know, like, 189 for this arrangement. I pulled the plant out of the ground, put it in a pot that I got from the flea market, and then it was more like it was on a beautiful table, stainless steel, and so it just looked cool, you know? And so it just kept. You're literally doing this all by yourself? Yeah, all by myself. Yeah. You're picking up the plants, you're ordering picking the plants. Picking them up, pulling them out of the ground, doing whatever, coming back, doing that before I open, always making sure I'm open. You know, I hated to put that sign that I'll be right back. 
or I would get someone from next door to watch the store for me while they were, you know, always try to keep it open, you know, always left the lights on at night. I'm a big believer And you were in this in location for how many years? Uh, I, only two years. When, what happened was the boat started sinking. Boat started sinking. So I'm throwing concrete inside the hull, you know, to make it stop sinking. And, um, you know, and then I got another punch. Another punch was the bridge right there next to my store. They were redoing it. They cut off the street where my store was. They killed I, your business. I had the city come out. We did this big uh, thing at my store and talking about it. The whole city block did all that. You know, we we're trying to get them to keep that street open, but they wouldn't. And without the traffic, you were dead. We're dead. And so I saw that coming and I started looking for a new store. Where was the next door? Federal Highway, Fort Lauderdale, downtown. I had enough money um, for first, and I didn't, I didn't have uh, security. I had first and last, so I got security over time, you know? And then you moved your stuff into that spot? Yeah, into the spot. So, but this is the challenge. Poor John. Now it's called the plant boat still. People are oh, like, what's you have the no plant boat? You have no boat. Right, so I dealt with that. So watch this story. This is another turn. So I'm in this new store on Federal Highway. I thought I hit it big. It's looking at Federal Highways big time, right? It's the big main street. I'm looking at downtown Fort Lauderdale, right? I get a fence put in for 1800 around the shop. I just got my sign up. I'm barely making enough money. I was worried about my electricity. Here comes Monday morning, right? I open up my store. I'm so worried about my electricity getting turned off. This guy from Hollywood Kia, the owner, comes in and said, hey, would you do my house today? I called a friend, Rodrigo. I said, come, he wants to buy like, I don't know, it was crazy, like $8,000 or something in plants. He said, I'll pay you cash today. I said, 100%. He came, I, I, I went and bought all the plants like within three or four hours, right? We got to the house around one or two o'clock in the afternoon. We delivered all the plants right when i pulled out of his driveway and he says man amazing he literally hand this is this is how it went he handed me cash literally and i get a phone call from my landlord my new landlord i've only been there for four months he said you need to get back to the store a car ran through your store oh, it was all over, all over the news i was i was famous in fort lauderdale for like six weeks the helicopters came in they were the car went right through my store and I knew when I heard that I was like oh god that's not good and I guess you know I already knew what it looked like because my store was five feet from the street so I knew literally the car went it was all over the news all over the news you lost your whole business again lost my whole business I had the money that he had given me is what I had and when I'm pulling up in the car and all this the the whole street was closed and the building was collapsing into the street. All the fire trucks, they let me in. They saw me. I see my building. All my money is right there. That's all I had. And the cash in my pocket. And I was worried about FPNL that morning. Well, wow. guess what? FPNL, Florida Power and Light, was pulling up to turn the electricity off. Why? Because the building was collapsing. So it was this ironic, weird thing wow. that here I was, you know, and uh, that was my story, it, you know. This is yeah. like 2014, probably. This is 2014. I lost everything again. Sober. I wanted to go across the street and get that beer. I did. It was the first thing I could think of. I didn't know what to do. I had that, this van that I had saved up to get through the first year and a half. It was old, like, 70s style van, you know. I pull up in that with the plant boat stickers on the sign. Do you have any photos of this? I do. You got to send me the photos. I, I, we got to put, we got to put yeah, the photos on the Yeah, you're going to see the car in there. We have to, man. Yeah. So what's your next move? You'd, obviously, you're, you're like, I my, want to have a beer. I want to. No. My, oh, I was right at it the next morning. Um, the newscasts were calling me, Channel 10, Channel 7. I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do. You know, I thought, well, let me, you know, let Get me exposure. go talk about this. You yeah. know, and so I went out there and I talked about it. And then I, I had people dropping money off to me. I had people like, like thousands of dollars like people just like oh my god this is terrible and it really helped me and then it was so interesting about five days later i'm going home just you know not you know tape my stores taped up i'm not really allowed in there but i'm going in and out because it, it's condemned right it's collapsing all concrete ceiling 
And so uh, I'm driving home and, you know, I've got cash in my, the cash I had in my pocket and all this. What am I going to do? Well, the store that I lost when I lost everything from drugs, from starting drugs and alcohol, right? When I started my very first store, she calls me up on my drive home and says, Matt, I heard what happened to you on the news. Would you like your old store on Oakland Park back? Wow. And I said, oh my God, you have no idea. I said, that would be amazing. And so that week I was in there uh, scraping the pink paint off the floor. Because they, she had a different tenant in there. She, they turned it into a pawn shop. They covered all the windows that I loved because I love light. And they put walls on all the windows. I took all the walls down, just press board and two by fours. And uh, they lowered the ceiling, crazy weird stuff. They painted the floor pink. It was terrazzo. I actually wow. had it. Yeah, and they painted over painted that. Painted over terrazzo. You know what terrazzo? I just went right in, stripped it. Da, da, da. I knew how to do that. I knew how to get started again. And yeah, then it start. Then it. Then it. Again, just, you're doing this all by yourself. Oh yeah, that at that time I had an on and off person, right? And so here comes the plant boat. The plant boat gets into this space. I was used to this space. People knew me, and yeah, I started rocking and rolling. Now at this time, are you cranking out on personal appointments, going to people's houses? This is where it happens. And about four or five months into the plant boat, there. New energy, excitement. I, I get, I landed a project, the biggest project I ever landed. It was like eighty thousand dollars, and I, I, I didn't even. The, the designer said, "Listen, I make money on what you put in my house for this client, so I could put a piece of art there. So if you put a tree there, it's got to be an expensive tree." And I'm like, "Okay, what does that mean?" Interesting. So the designer is making a percentage Commission on the spend. On the spend. On anything that designer puts in that house. They charge a what? percentage, yeah. like 3%, and 5% the or whatever. The bad thing for the designer was that the guy loved plants. He wanted plants everywhere. That means less artwork. Artwork is more money. So he looked at me and said... He said, you need to charge more his money. His eyes got real big. And so I did. <laughs> wow. And I, I was going... This is a billionaire client. This is now... He's in... He lives off 17th Street Causeway. Guy took three homes and tore them down on the Intracoastal and built a house with a tunnel. All kinds of craziness. But I went there one day, and I'm knocking on the door thinking the designer is going to answer, but it was him, the owner. And I was like, I didn't know who it was. I was like, hey, how are you? He goes, you're the plant guy. And I said, I, yep, that's me, the plant boat, but yeah, the plant guy. And that's the day that's that the I, moment. That's the day that I, after I got in my car, I got on my phone and I searched up theplantguy.com and I found it for sale. <laughs> I took the money that he gave me. And bought it. And bought it. You're the plant guy. Yeah. That was your first $80,000 project. Oh, yeah. And then I wanted more of that. Now, I want to keep hearing the story, but yeah. mathematically... Mm -hmm. On that eighty thousand, yeah. As a business owner, do you feel like you charged enough money on that? Now, looking back ten no. years ago, you should have charged how much? Oh gosh, one twenty, one fifty. Yeah, yeah. It was a lot of work. It was a lot. And it was just you and maybe a part-time helper. No, and then I had like three people. Okay, got it, got it, yeah. got it. Now, or me and two other people. So you undercharged? Oh yeah. Like you literally have created. All your education by just going through the experience. No one had a plant store then. That wasn't the in thing to do. Right. Now you look on Instagram and everyone's got these plants and there's like yeah. the plant dude and this plant girl and they love plants. Well, there was no plant store. I was the plant store. You were I the was, plant guy. I was creating a business. So the designer in that situation got paid a percentage of the 80 grand. Yeah. And the designer probably would have convinced the seller yeah. or the homeowner that 150 was a good price. Right, or he could, but yeah, he could have, yeah, yeah. I didn't know what my worth was at that time. Even now, you're, I, now you're like five, six years into the business, you still didn't know your worth. Correct. Wow. Yeah. So you change it to the plant guy. Yeah. You change your signage, what happened? Oh gosh, I changed the signage immediately. Uh, well, not immediately, about four weeks later. 
but everything went to the plant guy. I went, and then I was uh, on Instagram, and the Instagram, the plant guy was not available. Oh, so, shit, okay. So I messaged the guy, and I'm like, it's some plant nerd, you know? And he's like posting every once in a while. I looked at how much he's posting. I'm thinking, oh, okay, no, it's not every day. And I don't think, I said, so I messaged him. I said, hey, you know, I'm interested in your, your, the plant guy thing. He goes, oh, man, yeah, yeah. He goes, yeah, no, I, I love it, you know. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I said, what could I do for you to, to take that name just because it really represents what I'm trying to do? And he's like, oh, well, you know, I'm looking to get a, a, a nice light for my grow house. And I'm like, oh, really? And he said, yeah. I said, okay, well, send me, send me the link to it and tell me how much it is so I can check it out. And he sent it to me. It was like $500. And I'm like, oh, man, I don't know. I, you know, I, I don't know. And I said, well, maybe I can do that for you. And so he took the $500, sent me the password, so that I got the plant guy. So wow. I just try to keep getting the plant guy. Now. Dude, you are creative, bro. Yeah. You charismatic son of a bitch. <laughs> right. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. Like, you're like, I'm not going to take no for an answer. Your answer well, I always is, I don't have any money. Right. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to get really creative didn't. about this. You know, like, <laughs> you know. Did you ever think you were going to have a meetup of 100 plus people at no, your spot? never. Look how freaking cool this is. This it is sounds, amazing. Looks great. Sounds oh, we're great. We're not stressing out Christine, are we? No. All right, so you switch it to the plant guy. Yeah, I switch it to the plant guy. You're in this little strip mall at this point. Strip still. mall. What's yep. the next move? So the next move is everything got started getting figured out. You know, it's so important about the name. If the name doesn't have a connection of what you're doing, it makes no sense. Right. People want to invest in a story. It has to have a story. Yeah. And it has to have a story that you can feel, right? And so it went from that guy calling me the plant guy and him telling me I'm the plant guy. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I am the plant guy. Yeah. You know? And it was like, gosh darn it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the plant boat didn't fit. And I always feel like where sometimes people go wrong is like we get attached to things, right? We're like, oh, the plant boat means so much to me. And it did. You know, it at really the time. Did. Yeah, it was, it, part, it was part of the story at the but time. The thing about me is I know when I have to cut my ties, you know, I had to say, you know what? The plant boat is not suiting me. And let, let's let's be real. This job that I landed, the guy called me the plant guy. I never would sell an artificial plant in my life. I only did live plants, but I had all of these years, people were saying, would you do artificial plants? I'm like, no, 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 no. And then I, I had to start listening because if you don't listen, if you're just too, and, and they're telling you over and over again, then it go, you have this aha moment. Oh wait, maybe I, maybe I should, you know? And so I did, I ordered, I ordered some live artificial plants and I got it on credit. I didn't even have the money for it, but I did. I, I uh, ordered like three grand, and, and um, I had the artificial plants come in. They came in. And I'm like, oh, I pushed them to the side. I was just like, and they just sat there months for months. And then I kind of would pull them back in and keep thinking. And so I, because it, it has to feel right for me, right? I have to love what I'm doing, you know? And so then I found that spark, and I'm going to make it look as real as possible. You know? Is this where you started doing the lifelike artificial stuff? The lifelike plants? And, yeah, yeah. You know, um, or was I, that years I, later? I, it was years later. I was using out of the box stuff, right? And just so, like, it just keeps going. And I keep, you know, I keep trial and error and, you know, learning and, you know, selling live plants was the hardest thing I've ever done. And why is that? Is it because they die and then people are like, hey, this 100%. is dead, what do I do? 100%. And you had all this warranty work? 100%. And I, and I actually, I, I squeezed it out as much as I could. I got as good as I could get at it, right? Because I, I thought, you know what? Let me sell them moisture meters. You stick the moisture meter in. So every time I sold a live plant, here you go. This is how you use it. If it's wet, don't water it. It's real simple. It saved about 20% of the people, but still... If you sell a live plant, you're going to get a Some phone people call. just have a brown thumb. They just kill everything. Most people. Right. They just overthink it. You know, things are just overthought. You know, we get too nervous and we're like, oh, my God, it, it needs water. It actually didn't at where all. Was, where was the moment where artificial became something that you were like, this is actually cool as shit? Yeah, that was probably like uh, three years ago. Yeah, three, what, four what, years what ago. What was the moment? Um, so 
At, so you keep talking the scale, I'm going up. And then I thought, okay, and so I started doing really well back on that little small store. The store was 900 square feet. That's small. I was doing 50 grand a month out of there, max. I couldn't squeeze anything out of there. I, I knew it, the scale, the, there was not enough space and I couldn't, there's no room. Um, and so I'm like, I kinda, I need to expand, you know? I wanted to get another store. I got a store in the mall and that one. Then I did another store in Aventura Mall. So I had three little stores going. Then I realized I'm spreading myself thin, you know? And I realized, oh wait, no, this is not the smart idea. You know, and I, and I, um, I, I had to quickly learn. I took, so keep, Fast forward a couple of years, now I have like projects that I'm laying in at 180,000, 220,000, right? Because the name's getting, is it because the name's getting out? You're getting it better at marketing? Right. The, or it, did you get better at finding the clientele? All three of those. Did you also start believing in your pricing? 100%. You were like, I'm undercharging. This planter right here that you see, they're made of fiberglass. Yeah. This, this planter right here is like 900 bucks, mm. right? Do you know how hard it was to sell that in the beginning? When I started selling them, I used to call the owner. I said, listen, you need to lower your prices. I can't sell these things. I wasn't selling them the right way. I didn't believe in it. You didn't believe in it. I didn't it. believe in it. I, and even my employees were like, God, those are so expensive. You had to stop that verbiage. Yeah. You had to stop that. I had to believe in why are they, they're made like a boat and painted like a car. Right. You know how like a Corvette who oh, yeah. is made? They're, like, oh yeah. This took two weeks to make, I'm sure, you know, like they pop. Yeah, when you start looking at it that way, you're like 900 bucks is cheap. Right, it's actually a piece of art. Are you kidding me, 900 bucks? Right. That's it? So when I started- I mean, there's there's pots here Yeah. that are some of the coolest freaking pots I've yeah. ever seen in my life. Right. You guys are basically, they're all made incredibly well. They're not just some cheap plastic yeah. things. Yeah. They are pieces of art. So I started with this company, Jay Scott's, yeah. and you know, I, um, I was like number 34 or 44, some crazy selling them. And, and now I'm like their number one guy in the United States selling their product. Wow. And so now they offered me a space. In, was uh, that a slow, gradual belief change? Oh yeah. Or was it like one mor morning you're like, no dude, this is, uh, these are cheap. I, no, I had, to, I had to believe in it right then and there and realize it. You know, it was kind of like one, an aha moment, you know? And I do a lot of those, like, cause I, I'm really good at um, listening and then and then seeing and then feeling and, and going, wait, oh, that's a conclusion. Were you selling these boxes at that small little strip joint? Yeah. yeah. And you were small selling ones. these things for 900 bucks? Trying, yeah. I think also the challenge is, you know, you walk into like a Cartier store right. or you walk into like Gucci. Right. The environment right. feels there like you, you should be spending more money. There you go. You walk into this environment, you're like, I should be spending 50 grand today. 100%, 100%. But you walk into a strip joint where maybe there's a- 100%, like a, I had grown out of it. When you walked in, it was dope. As yeah. dope as it could be. Right. But the outside was not great. And so I felt that energy and I thought, you know what? I need to switch this into a design center. And I had to use that verbiage. It was no longer a mom and pop retail. It was, yeah. more, I got rid of the price tags. I wanted to turn it into a, a somewhere you could just come and bring your family and yeah. look and just be like, oh wow, moments and just kind of keep. Which you is know. what this place is now. Correct, yeah. I mean, I've, we've got people just look, they, they want to get behind us really bad. Right, I know. They've been like, what's going on back here? What's I happening? I got addicted to when somebody would walk in and their first words were. Holy shit. Wow. Wow. And I, and I love that. And then I'm now, so when I design and I create, I, I want to go for that wow, right? I want to do 35 year old ferns hanging from the ceiling and they come down with a motor and I want you to go, wow. I even have, you know, better ideas, but now I, I feel a little more financially fit. Of course, yeah. And then I can. A lot of it, a lot of it seems like this journey that you've taken was a lot of, you got to believe in yourself. Yeah. You got to see the, I guess, the word I'm looking for is evidence. Yeah. You wanted to see the evidence in your client's face. Yes. The thirty nine hundred dollar lady going, Yes. Dude, you changed the way my whole house looks. Right. And you're like, Wow, I'm good at this. Right. Then you get to the guy that's eighty grand. Right. And you probably had a hundred moments between that. It's like little nuggets of I'm good enough, All I'm that. good enough. It was like feeding me. 
And then you finally get to a point where you're like, even the boxes, you're like, no, no. This is a design center, not some yeah. mom and pa spot. You right. started using different words and believing Correct. in yourselves. Correct. I wanted someone to come in and say, oh, I want that for my house. I didn't want them to come in and say, how much is that? That's not what I wanted. And when they said that, I knew they probably weren't my client. You know what I mean? Because it's not about the money for me, really. And, and like you said earlier, earlier when we were getting ready for this, and I looked at you and you go, wow, I said to you, wow, this is, place is, is pretty, right? This is amazing. I do that. I stop and I go, wow, this is pretty. This is cool. And that's how I feel when I get done with clients. So it's, it's this cool energy that my guys love it because we have all these parts and pieces and they look like crap. Yeah. But when we get to the house and we put it all together and the finished product, my guys are taking pictures with their cell phones, which tells me that they're excited, right? That they can feel and see the finished product. And that's what it's about, you know? And, and you can look back and go, holy cows, someone's gonna walk in their front door every day and feel great. They don't know why, but I can tell you why. And you know? also they're happy to show off their house to their friends. Yeah. And you give them that gift. Right. Right, because we've all been in a house that's not staged, it's not decorated right. properly. You're doing this on a, on a big scale for people to have money. Correct. Now, your clientele seem to be top 5%, yeah. top 20%, Yeah. right? Yeah. So there's good and bad there. Right. The good is that the economy can't stop you. Right. Because rich people don't stop spending money. Nope. Actually, they, they get richer, I think, even. They get richer. Yeah. I, I, no offense okay. to everybody, but COVID right. was like the greatest thing for me. Right. I got richer over the last three years. And COVID was amazing for me. Because all your clients are making a ton of money and they're stuck at home. All my wealthy clients were at home and they wanted to make everything nice. Yeah. So you guys were doing a lot of in-home visits? Yeah, I remember, yeah, when they closed, they tried to close us down, and so we were kind of, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, with the masks on and doing it anyway. Like, all right, I'm going to but people's Florida, houses. Florida, we were open, you know, they yeah, opened Florida's us right awesome. quick. Yeah, You know, so it was cool. Okay, so when did you start getting into the animals? When did that start? So there was a company that started the animals prior to, to me. I brought, I, they came into the United States, and I was like, oh, my God, I love these. Yeah. Let's do it. It fits my vibe, right? And uh, I took that from them doing them to where I said, you know what, I'm gonna do my own, you know, and, and do them even better, right? And do them, um, just, you know, put my own stamp on them, yeah. you know? Because it, it just it just fits me, you know? It's, it's just creative, it's outside the box. You know, I remember when they, they had first brought them over and people were like, what is that? I'm like, no, no, no it's so cool, it's so cool. It you is know? so unique. So cool, and I, yeah, and I explained to businesses that come in, they're like, oh, we're thinking about putting an animal at my business. I'm like, why are you not right. putting this at your business? My mentor, yeah. Bobby Castro, actually has your Easter Island head. Yeah, we made that custom white base to set up, so when he looked out the window, it was propped yes. up like a trophy. Yes, and it is unbelievable. This guy has a $40 million house. Amazing. And his favorite piece of art in there is your thing. Yeah. It is, it's in his kitchen. Yeah. A $40 million house has that in his kitchen. He turns and it, bam. It is insane. Yeah. It's actually on the outside of his outside. house through glass. Yep. Oh my gosh, it, like With the design the of it was insane. Yeah. It's a, it's a talking point. So you start getting into the animal stuff. Did you start wrapping it in turf yourself or was that a thing already? Um, they were wrapping in turf, but I figured it out. It's a process. I mean, your guys' quality is insane. Yeah. It's, it's and crazy. I've been to your shop. Your shop, like these guys, how long does it take to wrap an animal? A couple weeks. Yeah, we're getting it down a little bit tighter, but it's it's a process. A couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. It's not just one wrap, no. staple, staple, staple. No. Inch by inch, man. There's no seams. Yeah. So, but now we're doing big things like MIA letters that are 14 feet tall for the Hard Rock Stadium. So now we have our own welding shop. So we weld the frames here and then we turf it. Okay, so now you're starting to see a lot of success. Yeah. You had, when did you move into this building? So in Oakland Park, we're back on Oakland Park, right? And I had just gotten that, I turned it into the plant guy, changed the name, success, got a couple retail stores, started to lose money on that. Like Spreading yourself quick. too thin. Oh yeah, the rent and the one store was $28,000 a month. 
they had talked me into going there. You know how malls are, I don't know if you know. They project your income. They projected to me and said, you're gonna do 300,000 a month here. I was like, what? Aventura Mall, I'm gonna do it. I had landed a big project, I took 180,000. I put it into this amazing kiosk. They actually built it for me out of Chrome, it was amazing. And they said, and then I opened. So much excitement, can't believe it, it's the pinnacle of my life, I'm moving forward, not. Not. You couldn't get any I traction? I did 100000 the first month. It was in December. That was during the busy time, right? January, 11000 So 28000 And your 000, rent is 28000 28000 28, right? So this is where the I kick in. This is where I'm good at, right? So eleven grand. So I start going to the mall, and I'm saying, listen, it's not working. I go, you have... You, and I realized they brought me to that end of the mall. Why? Because Apple left. Apple's going over there. They needed something like this. That's what I put in there. It was amazing. I was like, so then I realized, aha, wait, you wanted me here. So then I, I changed the tune. And in two months, they were like, you know what? Don't worry about rent. Just stay right here. I was like, okay, that's great. And that's cute. But I still have payroll at 16 grand a month. You know? Like... And so it just wasn't, so I, I took my took my stuff and I, you know, I, I had to get out. They let me go and, you know, it was it. So it's just, wow. you know that, you know, you, you but you quickly save yourself. You know, I, I had to pull out. Good thing you did. Yeah, I pulled out real quick. So at that point, you still had your mall, strip mall and another spot. Yeah, and I had to check my ego. You know? Because you were growing, feeling confident in your growth. Yeah. And then you go, wait, hold on. I, I just had this big, par you probably had an opening party. My ego was holding me there for a minute. Yeah. You know, it's so funny how if you don't look at yourself and go, wait, wait, hold on. Oh, yeah, I felt so cool, you know, in the mall. Oh, you're the plant guy in the mall. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's costing me. And then I, I realize it's not working. I'm not getting the return on that. I wasn't landing the project that I wanted to. I created the space, and they were the clientele that I didn't want, you know, right? And so I figured it out real quick, which is great. I'm good at that, right? You know? And so I pulled out. Da, 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 da. And then, so I'm in that little store, still in that little store. I had those two, got rid of that, whatever, whatever. And so I found um, a 6,000 square foot store, a street over in Fort Lauderdale. I got it. It's a big lights, sunshine, brand new. They built it. He leases 6,800 a month. I thought it's rocking and rolling. Let's do it. And so I get in there, put everything in, and I, we get in, and then I realize in the first week, one, the first thing I realized is the sun rises on the west side, so I didn't get sun in my window until like two o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm a light guy, I'm a plant guy. Like I love light. And I was like, oh no, I, I, the light's not coming in. Oh shit, not till two. Like it's so dark. Because it was a warehouse with window front, right? And so it started hitting me. And then I'm like, oh, I'm on this Dixie, Dixie Street. It's a side street. Started me up. So no traffic. Yeah, sorry, traffic, but it was a weird. It wasn't. So I'm five months in, huge lease, five year. We're talking in his ball court. Wow. And I'm not feeling it. And so like four four months in, I'm like I'm starting. I'm like no, I, I need to look. So I wanted to drive and find something else. So we're driving down the interstate. I'm thinking, you know what? Let's put the store in between Miami. West Palm Beach, Hollywood, Fort Lauderdale, yeah. on the interstate, what? Visible, and I already knew then, I'm gonna put a fucking animal on the roof. Yes. You know what I mean? And I'm gonna connect the whole Tri-County with that. They're gonna drive by, I seen the plant guy, I saw it on Instagram. Why did I see it on Instagram? Because I'm promoting it where you live. Right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They don't know why. And that's what I did. And so I got out of my lease, I talked the guy into it, I'm so sorry, let me, what can I do for you? Da, 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 da. Let me help you. I'm going to fix it, clean it back up, get everything out, help promote it. I'm going to redo the landscaping out front for you. Yeah, that good? It's good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know, pay me this. Okay, okay. He could have held me to a, a very big deal. It was a very big deal. So I got that done, and I, I got this one. This place was vacant. It was vacant. We were driving by. How the interstate. hell was this place vacant? What an right. amazing spot. Yeah, right? The minute I walked in, it was facing east. The yep. sun rises. You get that. When I come in here, I've been in here a couple times Double now. Double windows. The whole place gets flooded with light. Yeah, lit up. All yeah. day, because you've got those tall lights. So 
not even till noon. It's like all morning long, this yeah. thing is just full of light. 100%. So you shut down the other two spots. Yep. And then moved everything over like, like that, you know? And how's it been? Amazing. So we got this space and we were, you know, I, this was great because I have a garage door in the back. The guys could work out of here. We can build. And yeah, it, it, it just took off. You went from being a guy in 2009, 2010. Yeah. Buying a $69 banner. Yeah. With a pipe. Yeah. And right, wrapping rope around it. Yeah. To being a guy that now, what, what would you say is your average revenue on a monthly basis? Um, three to 400,000, 280 to 480. Two, eight, depending on the season. Yeah, 480,000. I wasn't doing that in six years in a year. Like, and now you're doing that in your peak, some, your months. months. Yeah. So like December this year will be your busy month, right? Oh yeah. I'm so what would you say it. you'll do this this December? I, I'm projected. I I'm thinking like four fifty five hundred. You know. Four fifty five hundred. That's what. I, yeah. Okay. How big is your team? Uh, Eighteen people right now. And what does that look like? Um, so we have how uh, many people in the office? How many people in the warehouse? We have uh, four, five people in front of the house, which is um, design, design, sales, right? Um, and also my videographer. Yeah, it's so important. <laughs> yeah, your Instagram's amazing. Yeah, and I thank you. And spending money there is so key, you know. And then you've got the other thirteen people in the back. Yeah, so we warehouse. Have all, so now I have a ten thousand square foot production facility that I added two streets over. And then I have a welding shop separate, right? To keep the welding separate. And so I have three welders full-time there. And then I have 10 people full-time at the production facility. Okay, so how does the plant go from, plant guy go from 400,000 a month to a million a month? We get smart. <laughs> I, think, I think there's a couple of things. Tell me. I think the biggest thing that you need. Yeah is you need an outside salesperson. Right. I think you need an out, a salesperson that's calling on developers, builders of condos. I 100%. think you should be having an outside sales rep talking to every interior designer in the entire Florida yeah. region, building relationships with them. I can only imagine because everything comes to us right now. I'm at, I know. You would literally triple your business. I've with, never made a phone call outwards. If you had an outside sales rep yeah. and that person's full-time job, was to go and call every interior designer in, in Florida yeah, and have them come in, wine and dine them. Right. You're, tr you're gonna triple your business. 100%. Triple your business. 100%. With one person. Yeah, I believe it. Now the challenge is, can you keep up with the demand? 100%. You think you can? 100%. <laughs> with the right team. <laughs> <laughs> with the right team. Yeah. So, with I, policies, I mean, procedures, and all that stuff in place. Who do you think is your next hire? Who, who uh, salesperson? Besides salespeople. Oh. You have any idea of who the next hire should be? Mm, you're gonna tell me? No, I don't know. I well, sales. I'm curious from your side. Yeah, sales right now. I need another salesperson. You need an, you need another inside salesperson inside too. Inside salesperson, yeah. Where is most of the business coming from now? Um, Instagram. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. You went from being worried about what street you were on. Right. To now just going, I just need to do great content. Great content, and it has to match this place. Yeah, the vibe. It's the, actually even better. So it looks cool on Instagram, but when you get in here, it's even, you know. I'm, I'm impressed. I'm, imp I'm, I'm mostly impressed by you become sober. Right, sober, yeah. I think your personality is an impressive one, is that when you realized somebody was looking down on you yeah, yeah. and spoke down to you, yeah. you were like, that, like that. Gave that's me the never energy. happening again never never and that drove you to get sober yeah which drove you to go and start a fucking business for f again right. right and reinventing it throughout and reinventing it. it multiple times being dropping the ego to allow yourself to change out the name yeah change out the way you were doing business right upgrade everything you're doing along the way correct and look at you dude like this is so impressive thanks man do you feel like you've made it in a lot of ways um I, uh, I do, but I really, you know, I, I do, but I, I want to make it even better. Of course. I mean, but you know. you've got, but do I feel, yes. Look at your team, right? And look at Christine. I'm so excited. Yeah. 
right? This is how many years in, and I still wake up like a little kid, and I can't wait to get here first. That's how I am. How do you, what do you think is the most fun project to work on? The, um, when let someone lets me be the creative, when they say, what should I do? They go, you do it, I don't want to be involved. Just Correct. You handle it. I want to cover my entire ceiling in plants, and I was like, all right, let's do it. He said, I knew you were the guy. <laughs> Just by the how fit you were. <laughs> really? Like, yeah, that was Robert Ravani, wow. Black Lion Investment Group. And then that was one of my first big ones. What's yeah. the biggest order you've ever had? I would say that's probably with Black Lion Investment Group, uh, New what Jersey. What was the product. order size? Uh, well, the, there's one that's coming up. I can't talk about that. Hopefully, that's going to be a million. But um, A million dollar order? Yeah. Yeah. Are they ordering animals, plants? Everything. Plant walls? Things coming out of the wall with freaking water flying. Is it residential stuff. or commercial? It's commercial. Holy sh**. It's, it's going to be a restaurant that's the sickest restaurant around, like the Bellagio. And they're going to get, you, if you land that contract, it'll be a million plus dollars. Hopefully. Yeah. It's a goal, you know. Brother, I'm, I'm impressed. Your grit is pretty impressive. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. The fact that you didn't, when you, when the guy drove through your <laughs> right. house. Most people would have quit. You would, everybody else would have quit. 100%. Everybody else would have gotten a job. It gave me more energy. Like it, within a day, I was like figuring it out. I don't know. It was weird. Yeah. Boat, Dude. Was, boat was singing, you know, uh, and getting sober at the whole time. Right. Yeah. How's the sober stuff now? Great. I don't even, yeah. Do you go to meetings or anything? I help like? people. You, okay, you're more of a sponsor now. Right, I'm not necessarily a sponsor. I'm so busy that I can't do that. Right. But what I can do is, it's funny, about two years ago, I went to this client. He owns a building, and he owns it, and he wanted me to do plants in the lobby. And uh, I was in the lobby, and he says, hey, you want to go have a drink after? I'm like, man, I don't drink. And he said, really? I said, yeah, man, I quit like eight years ago. And he's like, no way. I go, yeah, man. And I told him, I said, man, it changed my life. I feel amazing. I don't wake up weird. I just, you know, I just go. Two weeks ago, this guy calls me and says, hey, we need plants back at, we need you to redo the plants. And he called my salesperson. And I was like, oh, I remember that guy. He's such a nice guy. So I called him the other day and I was like, hey, I found out we're doing your project. I'm so excited. He goes, oh my God. I want to talk to you so bad. He said, thank you for taking the time to call me. I'm like, yeah, yeah, no problem. He goes, I, I want to tell you something. He said, remember that two years ago when I met you and you came out? I go, yeah, yeah, He said, and you didn't want to go get a drink? I said, yeah, yeah. He said, I've been sober ever since. <laughs> yeah. He said Whoa. it changed his life. Yeah. Look at you, man. That's freaking Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I love it. Well, we've got, we've got, I don't know. people. 60 to 100 people out here hanging out. We should yeah. probably get to it. Let's do it. I'm excited. You're the freaking man. No, I appreciate it. You are. I can't wait to do more business with you. Cool. All Thanks, of my man. friends are going to have stuff in their houses for the rest of their life. Rest of their life. I'm going to be buying a gift every <laughs> single month. Um, I'm so glad that we met. Thanks. Really Peace. appreciate your relationship in my life. Yeah, Thank you so much. It. Thank you, man. Guys, make sure you're following the plant guy on Instagram. Are you guys going to do a YouTube channel? We should, right? How the hell? Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Right. Okay. The, the video team is it? like, yo, you, you should have Let's a YouTube channel. It. When you're delivering products. Right. What what cool things you're doing in the warehouse. Barbie's dream house. We did oh that. Oh my it was sick. gosh. Oh, we just did Larsa Pippen's house. Does Larsa Pippen. How are you not doing we'll YouTube? Miami Housewives. These girls want you to do YouTube yes. of their stuff. Oh Let's my gosh. It. Guys, don't let him go any longer <laughs> without a YouTube channel, please. Okay, let's do it. Thanks, guys. All right, brother. Appreciate, appreciate you. Thank you, you so much. Guys, thank you. Make sure Thanks, you subscribe. Guys. Share this with another business person that you think you could inspire by this amazing story of the plant guy. Thank you so much, and we're out. Peace out.